was a nightmare. He apparently was struck on the head with a blunt instrument. I just felt like it was something that if we dug just a little bit deeper, there was a possibility that we could solve the case. It's a story that's haunted Goose Creek, South Carolina for nearly four decades. The murder of a trusted philanthropic barber over the thousands of cash in his pockets sent shockwaves throughout the small town and the even tighter knit Filipino community in Berkeley County. The investigation into the death of Joe the barber has been met with numerous roadblocks, false hope and rumors of cover ups. My name is Blair Sable and you're watching Gone Cold, where we revisit unsolved cases in the low country in the hopes to bring closure to families left without answers. We begin where Joe the barber story ended on a cold night in January 1987. It appears as though the victim of this incident, a Mr. Josefino Bagarian who resided at 1909 Morgan Avenue in Charleston, 62 years of age, also known as Joe the Barber, had closed his business, being Joe's Barbershop, at approximately 7.30 p.m. and proceeded to his vehicle, a red pickup truck, parked to the side and rear of the business, carrying a newspaper and a thermos bottle. But the routine of his night interrupted by violence. As he approached the driver's side of the pickup truck, he apparently was struck on the head with a blunt instrument by one or more assailants. A struggle ensued in the immediate area of the pickup truck as evidenced by disturbed surface dirt, quantities of blood, and loose change on the ground. The victim apparently was able to make his way back to the door of his shop where he collapsed. His daughter, Joyce Miller, now Coffin, still lives with the pain of his loss. Overcome with emotion in the this years following his death, she wrote a poem son. in honor of her late father that she shares for the first time in decades. He was such a good man, he never hurt a soul. If you needed anything, to him you knew you could go. You never lose those feelings, that closeness, that hurt, that loss. It's there. It's always there. You, you kind of push it down and you go on with your life, but it's always there. Well, Cawthon says she and her father had an incredibly close bond, one forged over fishing and tinkering with vintage cars like this Stingray that has stayed within the family. She remembers he was always cooking something in the kitchen. One of his favorite dishes was cinnamon rolls. He cared for and loved his family. He was quiet and simple. That's what he was about. If I needed advice, money or just to talk, I would go to my dad there at the barber shop. He would listen and always tell me what to do. For me and by my dad, we will always love you. Well, the loss of her father had such an impact on her that she dedicated years of her life to finding his killers. A brutal murder takes place in Goose Creek, but no one sees the thing and the suspect gets away. Now, nearly six years later, the killer remains on the loose and the family continues to grieve. Steve Price joins us now with tonight's story on Crime Stoppers Unsolved Crime. Yeah, Bob and Debbie, the, Joe the barber was the kind of guy who would have people come over to his shop all the time, not just for a haircut, but also to talk about fishing and talk about cars. Joe was also the kind of guy who would lend people money, and he almost always carried a lot of cash in his pocket. Now police think that latter trait may have actually cost him his life. I think the thing that keeps coming in my mind is driving up, seeing all the emergency vehicles, the yellow tape around the barbershop, um, looking over and seeing that I really couldn't see my dad, but I knew that he was underneath that sheet. Joyce Miller will never forget the night her father was killed. His name was Josefino Bugarian. He was better known as Joe the Barber. For 23 years, Joe cut hair at this tiny storm Goose Creek. But six years ago this month, that all came to an end. He came out here, as usual, on schedule, to get into his vehicle. And that's when he was assaulted. He was hit over the head and robbed of the money that he had in his pocket. But not without a struggle. It was really no secret that Joe always walked around with a lot of cash in his pocket, which is probably why he was robbed several times over the years, including at least once at gunpoint. The sad part of this story is that Joe was set to retire on his 60th birthday, which was just five months away. Say they don't have a lot of physical evidence in this case, and they never found the murder weapon, which they believe is a steel pipe. As for Joyce, she just wants to make sure her father's death is not forgotten, especially while his killer remains on the loose. I realize that these people are still out there, 
And more importantly, I realize that if they've done it once and they've got away with it, I'm, I'm really scared that they may have done it again or that they may do it again and that somebody else will have to go through what I've gone through all these last six years. Now, if you have any information that might help police solve this case, please call Crime Stoppers at 554-1111. A reward of up to $1,000 is being offered to anyone with information that leads to an arrest, and you can remain anonymous even while collecting the money. And Bob and Debbie, what police are really hoping to get at this time is maybe somebody who overheard a conversation where somebody was bragging that they suddenly had a lot of money. It happened a long time ago, but they're really hoping for a new break in the case. Six years turned into now nearly four decades, and no one has been convicted for Bugirin's death. For a time, there was hope that accountability was finally coming, but as soon as it came, it went. And so did the leads on the case. Cawthon has continued to live her life knowing all that her dad has missed. His plans to retire in his home country, birthdays, holidays, and life's biggest moments. It's been 37 years and Joe the Barber's killers have not been caught. What happened that night when Josefino Bugarin headed to his truck has haunted his daughter Joyce Cawthon ever since. It was a nightmare. Cawthon remembers him as a well-liked fixture in the community and like so many hairdressers, a trusted confidant for so many. This is him giving my son his first haircut. Over the years since his death, she's collected every piece she has left of him hoping to hold on to the moments they had after robbed of the ones that could have been. Answers wouldn't come until nearly 10 years after Bugarin's death. Four were charged in connection. Crystal Chitham Nash, Richard Allen Russum, as well as two children of city councilman Sal Gandolfo, Dean Gandolfo, and his brother Sal Gandolfo Jr. Gandolfo owned a business nearby. I was happy about it. But then after that came so many other disappointments. Two years later, the charges were dropped by solicitor Brent Allen Gray due to lack of evidence and a misleading witness statement. And later, the group sued the city for millions, claiming their arrests had violated their civil rights and cost Gandolfo the election for mayor. The city settled for an undisclosed amount. Time went on, and the case went cold again until Chief L.J. Roscoe took office. I just felt like it was something that if we dug just a little bit deeper, there was a possibility we could solve the case. Roscoe elected Captain Tom Hill to take over the case. He's now spent more than a year mostly following up on leads that went untouched by past investigators. But you can find holes in the entire investigation. Hurricane Hugo and a department-wide move to a new building had been to blame for the missing pieces. Plus, rumors have swirled that evidence was hidden on purpose. None have been substantiated. Cawthon remembers seeing a murder weapon, too, that there's no existing record of. And I know for a fact that when I went to see the detective, he had that pipe in that room, in a bag, why it was in that room in the bag in his office, I do not know. I need somebody with direct knowledge about this case to at least have the conscience to reach out to us and tell us what happened. Um, I feel like uh, Joe's family deserves closure. When I read my Bible, there only is where I find sweet peace. Until we all turn to God, the Lord's hate and killing will never cease. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus tells us to love one another. Why is it that we treat each other like dirt instead of like a brother? If only the ones who killed my dad had taken the money and run away. If only they had love in their hearts, you would be with us today. Well, closure, even with renewed efforts today, has still not come. The Goose Creek Police Department is asking anyone with any information to contact their non-emergency line. The number you see on your screen, 843-572-4300, and you can remain anonymous. For Gone Cold, I'm Blair Sable. Thanks for watching.